there's no IP address. And then I clicked on stuff and remembered I have to start remote desktop presenter. And there we go. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll get a thing. And then, hey, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. We have a chat. All right, I'm going to call it. I'm going to say this is as good as it's going to get. And I'm going to press record on audio in three, two, one, go. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. All right, I'm try I feel like I feel like I've become old and geriatric, and I shouldn't be allowed to drive my own car anymore, but my kids left the keys on the table, and so now I'm, I'm taking her for a spin. And Justin Robert Young. I feel like I'm going to call the police on Brian for driving his own car. <laughs> Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, Bryce is, is busy doing a uh, edit for Scam School because we're late. We're, we're, we're like a skip period. Yeah, but they're pregnant with an episode, so that's the good news. Yes, it's it's a boy, it's three-headed baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, gentlemen, we, uh, we did not talk Sunday because you all were at Dragon Con. Yeah. And, you were. Uh, it was a great now, time. I, I, thank you to all the Weird Things fans who said hello. Yes. Thank you to the people who said hello to Justin. <laughs> In the meanwhile, we had, uh, well, you know, our favorite topic here, other than Goblins, Singularity, and uh, Procon Space Elevator, is, of course, SpaceX, which I'm wearing a shirt right now. SpaceX success stories. This time we uh, more good news, right? More good news, folks. Um, the good news is is that in space, you want to get a lot of data. You want to experiment. You want to find out what would happen under certain situations. And SpaceX uh, got another data point. <laughs> they got another data point. All right. If don't you don't know ever... what that point is. Uh, okay. I heard, <laughs> I, before I saw the pictures, I heard, that there was an explosion. No, wait, it wasn't an explosion. It was a fast fire. And then I loaded up the picture of what was clearly an explosion. In no universe could I call that a fast fire. Yeah, I mean, I don't don't want to parse that or what was said in the moment or whatever because I don't yeah, – the thing blew off. The hey, damn... listen, you try uh, uh, communicating a real-time tweet in calligraphy to a raven from your yurt at Burning Man. Sometimes there's just a little bit of communication breakdown, and uh, and that's where uh, things might have got screwed up. No, I, I mean, mean, so, I, don't, I, mean I don't. Again, it, it's such a, and I, I think to, to the point. You watch the video, you see a fire, and then you see an explosion. And I and I guess I'm not an engineer. I'm not an air. I'm not an aerospace astronautical rocketry guy, but. Looks like fire, then something went boom. We don't know the cause. We don't know anything. We don't know anything other than what we saw. Sure. It's just funny from the mouth of Elon Musk, who is normally pretty good about just owning, uh, I don't even want to call them failures, but owning owning data points like this. Like He's like, yeah, no, we learned uh, successfully how not to fly another rocket. Uh, it, it's just weird to get an equivocation like that from him. Or I mean, he's, he's been... He has been, especially with Tesla and SpaceX, he has been very particular about pushing back on certain terms. And uh, I think I think if, if there is if one thing that he has uh, uh, repeatedly done is is be, I think, in his mind, clarifying and in the eyes well, of, of well, some. What was the state? I mean, I'm still trying to find what I've heard secondhand. He said this. I haven't found the actual statement. What happened? Oh, it was, it was a tweet. It was a tweet. The, I haven't uh, found the tweet. I found a tweet about, you know, there's something going wrong in the operation. But was it deleted since then or? Uh, I mean, I, I know I saw it when he posted it, um, but my, we can all look for the we can all look for the tweet now. If I'm, I'm searching Elon Musk fast fire. Uh, here we go. CNBC has an article says Elon Musk says rocket did not explode, but instead experienced a quote fast fire. And then uh, it says here, yeah, uh, in it, it probably you're missing it because it looks like an at reply. Uh, he says yes, seems instant from a human perspective, but really is a fast fire, not an explosion. Well, again, I mean, I don't, I don't know enough to know the difference in that, and so I'm not going to take that apart because, sure. like, I, I, I don't, hey. I. It blew up. They didn't want that to happen, and, and I think that, and I think that, in as they're looking in the middle of it, you know, there's 
all of a sudden there's a thing ignites. I don't know the difference. Point is, it blew up. They don't want that to happen. We're still trying to figure out what happened. And then and, and now is all the armchair quarterback, you know, you know, oh God, I don't want to name the guy. He's he's my my third favorite space columnist. My favorite being Emily Calandrelli, who writes for TechCrunch, who just does spot on fantastic fantastic uh yeah uh, she was great like she appeared on the live stream when you went out to see the uh the live launch right yeah so now she does stuff for TechCrunch. she does a great job of it and uh i think lauren gush is another another great example there's another person who's like hey maybe it's time for spacex to like slow down or do this like maybe but i don't know like you know when you're still cleaning debris up a launch pad we don't know what happened maybe it's not the time to be like I think you guys are really going about this the wrong way. Hey, by the way, uh, there there is a little bit of context. Uh, that tweet, Elon Musk was replying to someone who was asking, "Would the Dragon Escape Pod have survived this event?" So mm -hmm. he's say, so he's saying in that context, yes. The, in that and and that I do understand the difference between an explosion and a fast fire. Like that was fast enough, or it was slow enough that the escape would have been fine. So that makes a lot more sense. And there's a video that somebody uploaded where they showed, they compared the uh, the test of the Dragon version 2 launch system with the speed time with the explosion in real time and showed you, like, the moment that thing would get triggered, how that thing would have, you know, that's why Elon was confidently saying, oh, they would have survived or whatever. Like, we hope so. Like, I guess the way the Saturn escape system worked is they had three wires going along the body of the rocket, and if two of those wires got snapped... It's probably been an explosion. Yeah, the whole thing would eject. Wow. Huh. So. Well, I mean, listen, there, there is always going to be more scrutiny on SpaceX because SpaceX, SpaceX is doing things that have never been done before, right? And and so it is a natural talking point for some people to say, well, should they be done? Should they be done differently? Because there's not a lot of best practices beyond what they've done and their plan that they've laid out. There's just always going to be a lot of second guessing with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's, it's sad, you know, among the payload was Facebook's first satellite that, uh, that, that wound up getting lost obviously in the, uh, in, in the, in the explosion. And uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know exactly how much there is to this beyond this seems like, you know, it, it's obviously something that they would not like to happen and they hope happens as, as little as possible, right? Yeah, I mean, there's going to be, you know, it's they've had almost 12 months apart, you know, a rocket explode, you know, which is that means like, yeah, like there's that's not according to plan. It's hard to compare them because to anything else, because nobody else is trying to develop this ambitious of a platform and this thing. What is the, what is the price? What is the the cost on that? And and like I'm I'm all for like listen, let's find out what happened, and then we can like take apart the thing. But it's that, you know, the columnist kind of immediately, hey, they're doing like, well, maybe, but I don't know, let's find out. Um, and it you know it's frustrating because like you know we're hoping the end of this month to hear announcements about the Mars architecture. Yeah. Yeah, well, and I would imagine <clears throat> this has significant impact on uh, the odds or how soon we're going to see a uh, a capsule with a crew in it taken mm -hmm. off. Yeah, they were supposed to do NASA was supposed to do an update about that, and that got postponed because you know it, it you know it has a ripple effect on everything, and it might be a, you know it might be the most quote mundane thing where it's something in the arm, the strong back that supports it has nothing to do with the rocket. And it's like, oh, there's this minor glitch that could have happened anything or it could be serious. So, you know, we, we don't know. And, you know, it's uh, frustrating, but well, we look forward to seeing what's going to happen. Reddit's had some really good some really good commentary on it. If you go to reddit.com slash r slash SpaceX, uh, I would say it's a really good example of how the self-moderate mod systems and all that can work really well. We are getting good expert opinion to the top and crazy balls. It was a drone strike or whatever kind of stuff. <laughs> Not getting coverage and, you know, quickly people get clarified, get corrected when they say things that don't quite make sense. And I would say it's a pretty like, hey, is this a problem? Is this not a problem? What's going on? And they're also very like, let's not get overboard on speculation until we have more data. Yeah, so. uh, we, we, we're not that great, though. <laughs> We love to speculate. Well, I, mean, I think that there there are a few things that we can clearly kind of say that that this is something that is different than some of the explosions that they had obviously when they were trying to reland the rocket, right? I mean, like those those were things that had never really been done on that kind of level mm -hmm. before. This is something that is if if this happens 
again within the next, you know, six months to a year, I think that that is something that that is that is a a a, a troubling uh, a repeating occurrence, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And and it, and it might be again. We might there might be an investigation in this that reals, realizes there might be some fundamental issue that affected the first, that affected last year's rocket and this within design process or whatever there might be there might be these fundamental hey we need to do things differently or whatever kind of thing i was, could well be the case you know we need you know and that's have to figure that out and, and i want to clarify brian you're absolutely i mean we're not you know, we will punt it on stuff but we're i'm a i'm a cruise ship magician and uh that was made very very <laughs> apparent last week when i conflated the die photon effect and the discovery of the higgs boson last week which oh, that's yeah. on let's, me let's uh let's eat a little crow here uh, uh so the uh, and by the way i thought you had a very classy response and uh and i thought it was a, a classy uh questioning of us on that email a lot of class a lot of class involved yeah. Yeah, we last episode we talked about the uh, there was evidence. CERN had had uh, evidence of what they call the die photon, you know, uh, inference, which basically implied that there might be other particles and you know things going on outside the standard model, which has been an exciting area of research. Like what's beyond the Higgs boson? I had said that it had we had they'd found out that the Higgs boson had been the evidence for that had fallen through, which is. I will tell you in my head is not what I meant, but that is what I said. And I will own up to that is what I said. I'm a cruise ship magician, folks. Okay. And I'll remind that. And we've had uh, <laughs> several readers pointed it out. And you, our listeners, you guys are absolutely, absolutely right. That is fully, fully on me. I clearly said one thing that was totally not true. Higgs boson safe. It's safe. It's totally safe. It's totally safe. Okay. Yeah, so, that so was a, is, uh, is the, the dive photon discovery that has shown yeah that that's it that, is what that implied relevant. was that there is the standard model is sort of this idea of how we things work and we've been pretty good at confirming that I'm like yep this is true this is true then there's this like okay and now these these large particle colliders the high energy colliders could provide maybe we'll be able to go beyond and that has not fallen that's not happened there's been some criticism like you know we're spending a lot of money for that that could go elsewhere whatever and so anyhow and i i got a very very polite response from a physics student or physics master's degree student explaining to me uh one i was wrong and absolutely correct and two you know like Thank making the you. case for it but again it comes to ultimately we you know, like i want to know these things but i also want to know human origins you know i sure. also want to know you know more about protein folding and dna research thank you tom from university of minnesota at duluth thank you yes <laughs> Yes, very polite, very very polite. <laughs> and it was just it was. And then you get very that like, patient too. <laughs> he struck a very patient tone. Uh, it was it was something to see. It was uh, you know and and reminded of your favorite thing of uh, Murray Gilman and Michael Crichton talking about how they read the newspaper and each one like spix, you know Murray Gilman's like this physics is wrong and Crichton's like this entertainment section's wrong and they're like what else is wrong? So yeah, this was a wake up call to our physics physicist leaning. Listeners, yeah, that the odds yeah. are we're as correct on everything else as we were on that. <laughs> yes, yes, just about, including goblin husbandry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did did somebody say goblin? I felt I felt the goblin shiver. I got I got a gobble. Yeah, I got a goblin so gobble. Cannot rule that rule that out of the SpaceX blow up too. Like, let's just be clear, we're keeping everything on the table. Yeah, you know why is Elon Musk curiously quiet on goblins? Mm. Ne I haven't heard him discount the idea <laughs> once. Mm. Well, I have, uh, by way of uh, one of our listeners here, I got a phone. Pull this up. I'm so used to. Um, we had another goblin story that somebody sent me. It may have been. Oh God, this is a. Uh... Oh, this was a. Uh... And somebody sent me a creepy robot goblin stripper will haunt your dreams. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I'm gonna forward this to you, Brian. All right. Um, uh, because I have not watched this yet. I just saw a screen cap in that headline. This is from Ed uh, Godboy. Uh, may not be pronounced your name right. I apologize. Mm. So I'm sent that to you. So, so we're talking about something a... that's not Gremlins 2. Creepy. Yeah. Uh, all right, yeah. It, the title is Creepy Robot Goblin Stripper, which will haunt your dreams. And you, I believe you could just search for those words. And, uh, <sighs> oh, here we go. It comes up with Jordan Wolfson 14 Rooms. This uh, was published a couple years ago, but it's just an out-of-context uh, video. I'll tell you what, Justin, you want to 
you want to break this down for the fine folks so we can sure yeah uh here unfortunately my face is still on it there you go oh wow i think i've seen this before but but let yeah let's let's go i'll, I'll break it down here for you guys uh okie doke and <laughs> So uh, uh, what you are what you are hearing is uh, is is the Lady Gaga song. Uh, what you are seeing is from this angle a uh, a, 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 a sexily dressed uh, humanoid android uh, lady dancing into a mirror. What I would suspect that you could see at a different angle is the pole going in. To the wall, right? Yeah, it, it looks. Um, the motions are eerily. Uh, the, the tracking Erotic. is amazing. It's it's got uncanny valley written all over it because normally when you see animatronics or robots do moves, they're oftentimes you know pneumatic pulses. They're all herky jerky. They move more robotic, but this one is really good and it's yeah, really very disturbing. smooth. A lot of points of articulation as uh, as. You know, she definitely. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you what. Would be shocked to see her at your platinum like down at Miami Beach. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Andrew? It's a fembot where the upper part of the face is like a witch or a goblin mask. It's a uh, Jordan Wolfson, I believe he's the one. It is part of his art installation. Man, that is extraordinarily terrifying to look at. Uh, so, it's it's yeah. actually and and it's 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 how good it is that makes it disturbing because it, it's like it brings to mind. Uh, ex machina like you know you see sexy body parts followed by robot parts and it's like my body's and brain oh so there we go yeah do not but, approve. But, uh, it's actually very very well disguised uh the the white pole that actually secures it to the wall uh is is the same tone as as the dress and as you get closer you notice that not only is the skin a little bruised and dirty, but also so is the dress, and that is definitely a very weird goblin mask. Yeah. That's disturbing. Uh, it's uh, strangely attractive. Oh, wow. And also, yeah, all the fingers articulate, right? Are, yeah, fully articulated. Yeah. Um, listen, guys, I hate to interrupt this, but yowie. Uh, wait, are you talking about the uh, so-called Australian uh, Sasquatch? Well, the Yowie, yes. Apparently, there's been a Yowie sighting. A seven-foot Yowie seen near Toowoomba. Seven, uh, seven-foot uh, Yowie. Okay, wait. All right, so so wait. What? Uh, describe the Yowie for me again, Andrew. Well, from the article, it was probably around seven feet tall. It had a head like a gorilla and long arms. I couldn't see them from the waist down, but it was walking through long grass, says a woman who said she spotted it. So she said that uh, she was uh, going through the Darling Downs Mountain. I love Australian names for things. It's just adorable. The Darling Downs Mountain Range is near Toowoomba, and she spotted this. So listen, we've got a Yowie sighting, folks. So so um, have we uh, have we seen like police sketches side by side? Of I would love I would love to see a breakdown whether or not Yowie Sasquatch Yeti whether or not any of those are real. I would love an anthropologist to investigate the cultural differences as they manifest in their in their ape-like boogeyman. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to see a police sketch of a Yowie versus whatever the Chinese equivalent of it is. Oh, wait a minute. That's... Br All right. If, if there is a police sketch artist who listens to this show or you know somebody who is a police sketch artist, we need to get in touch with you immediately because we want to just feed you goblin and 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 cryptid sightings to see what the, what what gets drawn that would be amazing that's all, that yeah. okay if we can find somebody to do it we can make the price right and and that can be a new patreon uh level is that you get police sketches of cryptids Gosh. we can Gentlemen. figure that out that's great so wait, this is seven feet tall got gorilla arms just wandering around minding its own business man no rules, just right. Uh, man, I wonder how. Yeah, let me let me look up classic descriptions descriptions of yowies. Classical descriptions of yowies. Yeah, in the I just go yowie then image search. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, it says a uh, uh, describe. We got a side by side of Yowie and Bigfoot. Say again. There's a, if you type in Yowie in image search, you get a side by side of Yowie and Bigfoot. Oh, now we're talking. So I'm going to images.google.com, and I'm going to type in Yowie. Yowie. Uh, side by side, are we talking about like this right here, or over to the right? Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, according to this uh, this one interpretation, Bigfoot a lot more stocky, ape like. Yeah. Yowie's got these long, gangly arms. I mean, a little bit more D's in the arms, though, right? You know, that's that's uh, that 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 Yowie's been to Gainesville. He's got his pump on. He's jacked. <laughs> And it's like more orangutan like in color. Yeah, more reddish. Uh, Yowie looks more like an end boss. Bigfoot looks like a foot soldier. Yeah. No, I also, if I were to be doing a stand up routine, I'd be going, Bigfoot's walk like this. I'm Bigfoot. Excuse me, please. <laughs> Yowie's walk like this. Get out of here. I'm a Yowie. I'm, I'm from Australia. I eat fistfuls of fire ants. Om, om, om. My <laughs> eyes are made a bit, of snakes. Bit more of a ginger, the Yowie. Yeah, that it is. Do you, do you think, uh, what's the Yowie uh, accent? Does he have the Aussie? Say, is it, maybe the Bigfoot, he sounds a little more, uh, maybe like uh, like he's from the hills in the south, right? Or or maybe Pacific Northwest, he's probably a dope-smoking hippie. So yeah. he's just all like, oh, man, I just love that it rains all the time up here near Seattle. It's really, uh, do you know it's, uh, weed's legal here? I'm Bigfoot. Uh, but, yeah, no, that that pretty much would be how I would imagine it. Yeah, and then and then the Yowie would be more like, uh, like, hey, good day, ah, I crush your skull. <laughs> hey man, why why do you, you want to play hacky sack? Why don't you just chill out, man? You want to go to the Sydney Opera House? <laughs> Hey, is it, is it true that Yowies have pouches? Is it true? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing to think about is that we know that there was a Gigantopithecus blackie, which was the probably one of the largest apes that we know of that ever existed, that kind of like a mighty Joe Young sized, lived at least 100,000 years ago, but probably could have smaller groups and whatever could have existed much, much later on into human history. And, you know, as we said before, my favorite quote about chimpanzee fossils is there's not a whole lot of chimpanzee fossil record. And if they'd went extinct, you know, 300 years ago, we would have reason to be even wondering, you know, did they ever even exist? Oh, wow. So we that, that would have been like the ultimate cryptid right is that like we, there might have been some descriptions or whatever but we would just have never have you know, well have... think about this do you know how long aborigines have been living in australia uh, no yeah, yeah, for uh, ten thousand years for how long 50 50 000 years holy cow thousand years it's like the fifty thousand years ago is like that's how oh that's i believe that's the how far back it goes uh you know and so that's incredible. We think back how far back those migrations went. So uh, I may be so choo, choo, choo. they split off about 65 to 75,000 years ago and they made their way. Uh, the, they found like uh, Lake Mungo um, in Australia. They found re human remains in 45,000 years ago. Uh, hey, speaking of fossils, I saw today a, a, a unique, special, first of its kind fossil. I don't. Did you guys run across this? It made it the front page of Reddit. Uh, okay, well, we we can play a little twenty questions here. It's a fossil, um, uh, forty eight million years ago. Uh, this this situation happened and became fossilized. It is the first of its kind ever with vertebrates that's your that's your opening clue are they doing it no <laughs> no it's a good guess it's right. a very very good guess but no right. no they're not doing it although i i wonder Dad, do you think there uh, do you think there are fossils of a mid coitus big smiles on their faces <laughs> uh -oh. 
That uh, was, uh, I think, like a Far Side or something. Somebody, or was it was a Perry Bible Fellowship cartoon of like, yeah, the, you know, the 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 two different dinosaurs. Like nobody will ever know, and they get fossilized. <laughs> oh yeah, the museum. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know, Bri. What, what was it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Come, come on, ask. Yeah, you guys could get there. I bet you could figure it out. Uh, you'll play a quick round of twenty questions. I mean, one eating another. Uh, you know what? Uh, that's close enough. I'll say yes. There was, there was, uh, there was eating happening. Is it a snake eating its own tail? Ooh, it is a snake. It is a snake. Is it a snake eating another snake's tail? Uh, not a bad guess. It's not another snake. Is it a snake eating something else? It, it is a snake that ate something else. In this case, it's a, uh... A it's, baby! It's a lizard. Uh, but there's something... I'm sure there have been fossils of snakes that have eaten lizards before. This is a first of its kind. This is a snake that was eating a dinosaur? No, you ready? The headline is... Yeah, 48 million years ago, a snake ate a lizard with a bug in its belly, all three fossilized, capturing an entire food chain in a single fossil. The, it, 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 it's the turducken of fossils. <laughs> yes. Uh, and it's a, it's a pretty extraordinary photo. If, if I'm pretty sure I'm seeing it right. It looks, you can see kind of a, a bulge in the belly where you can see the shape of what I assume the lizard is if I'm seeing it right. And in there, they were able to get the detail of an individual bug eaten by a lizard swallowed by a snake. So now all I have to do is break into this uh, lab and eat the fossil and then take an <laughs> x-ray of me and and we'll have real history exactly and now and now we've taken it to a radical new level <laughs> oh uh, that's amazing. oh wait guys i'm sorry to interrupt uh -oh. um uh i don't know do I, do I even bring this up maybe we need to do this as a public service announcement uh oh what's well, up you know what i think you should all listen to it after we remind you that patreon.com slash weird things is where you can support this very show. Head on over there right now. We make sure that we do this show, whether it's easy, whether it's late, whether it's hard. We're making sure that we get this thing out to you each and every single week. So go ahead and kick us a little coin if you get the chance. Do it at patreon.com slash weird things. We are only, only six patrons away from being at the amazing level of 420 patrons. <laughs> yeah, by the way, that's allegedly Yowie's not a fan, but Bigfoot really wants us to get get up Bigfoot to 420. Bigfoot really needs six more. Six more patrons. <laughs> YOLO swag. All right. Time to play real urban legend or too freaky just to assume that it's real anyways. <laughs> Hold on, this is, this is a hell of a title. Re the, the choices are it's either a real urban legend or it's real too freaky just to assume no, it's really anyway. real, comma, urban legend. God, see, this is that Oxford comma <laughs> situation. So okay, either... so wait, hold on. What, what is it? It's real, not real, or real, real, but it's an urban legend, so it's probably real anyway? It's real, not real, or hey, we probably, we'll probably assume this is not real, but listen, let's not take any chances. Okay, all right. Are you better So real, not real, and better safe than sorry. Yeah. All right, all ready. Right, so, let's go. I'm in. I'm in. Locked I'm going in. to, loaded. in no particular order, give you some of the words from the headlines. Clown. Real. Yeah. Second. Mm. Sighting. Uh, oh, creepy! Second sighting of a creepy clown. Creepy uh, clown okay. sightings expand to second South Carolina city. Cre creepy. I'm actually, I'm actually out on this one. W oh, because you already, yeah, you've already read about this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, you've got that coy look that says maybe you are the creepy clown that's getting spotted around South Carolina. No, man, you want to try me? I, I was just in the uh, the American Southeast. Yeah. So I hear uh, what's what's creepy about the clown? Is it is it just a dude who's dressed? I mean, first of all, is there any anybody who dresses as a, at a clown who's not at a kid's party and possibly even those who are at a kid's party that doesn't get labeled as creepy in the headlines? 
I, you know, Brian, I think you're right. I think everybody has a God-given right to dress up as a clown, go wherever you want, stand on the edge of a forest, lure children into the forest. <laughs> Free country, Brian. Free country. I mean, I mean wait, 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 what about consenting adults? Can you lead? Can, can a guy just dress as a clown and lead consenting adults into the forest without being called creepy? Oh, I don't know they're about doing this clown shaming. In a Winston-Salem neighborhood, after two cho- two children reported seeing a clown trying to lure kids into the woods with treats. Let me tell you what this it pre-marketing campaign is amazing. Mm. It is lit, boy. There's I- no okay. So no, this is this is a thing. There's apparently been multiple sightings in and around the same general region, but two different wooded areas where clowns are trying to lure kids into the woods. Oh, I, man, I'm just heads up, heads up. This is this is lighting all kinds of alarm fires in the back of my mind. This sounds like Satanic Panic, 1982. Like, do we have any evidence that this actually happened? Or is this a case where one kid tells a story and all of a sudden all the kids are piping in? Well, that's why we're playing the game. Real, (laughs) not real, or better safe than sorry. Okay, I've better safe than sorry is out because we, we, we did better safe than sorry during Satanic Panic and, like, innocent people went to jail over that. So... I'm, well, I'm no gonna... one would get jailed unless you're planning on creating a clown internment camp. <laughs> I mean, first of all, that might be fine just in and of itself. But I, 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 unless there's pictures of it, I think this might be just kids literally talking out of school. Like kids. some kid says, I heard there was a clown luring people. Like, oh, yeah, well, we should tell somebody who did it. Well, I saw it. That, that kind of like, yeah. let me, uh, let me conflate the chain of experience to myself so that you'll believe me more kind of thing, which is kind of the root of just about every one of those. Oh, yeah, I saw it. Well, did you see it or did your friend see it? Well, my friend saw it. Well, well that's a difference. That's that, but see, and that's the trip, trick is that um, when somebody says what they want to communicate is I believe it's real, but the only way for me to infect you with that belief is to make that what seems like a minor jump, like, I already know it's real, so what does it matter if it's me that saw it or not me that saw it? You know, I believe it's there, and now you're going to believe it's there because I'm going to say I saw it. That seems like the step that that well, brings us there. Brian, what if I were to tell you... Uh-oh. ...that in Wisconsin, there are reports that late at night, a disheveled clown is walking through Green Bay with four perfectly inflated black balloons. Not talking to anybody, just walking through the streets with four black balloons and a disheveled clown outfit. I mean, that seems like an art project. Where in Wisconsin? (laughs) Green Bay. Uh, If you said Madison, I would have said it was an art project. What would you say if I said I couldn't have been the only person that actually tried to Google the gathering of the Juggaloos to see when that was? <laughs> That's a good uh, point. I didn't even think about that angle. So wait, hold on. So so so, uh, do you believe it or not believe it? Somebody tells you that there's a clown that re- that wanders around Green Bay with uh, with black balloons. I would believe that. I would, and I would believe it's some form of art project. Uh, well, that one's true, and there are photographs of him. His name, apparently, by the locals is Gags. And, uh, man, if I were walking down the street late at night and I saw Gags making his way toward me, I would I would cross the street. He Ta- is oh, he Jesus. is a weird specter. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, I'm taking a look at that right now. <laughs> that <laughs> is... Nothing weird there. Horrifying! <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, right on gags. Um, so, all right. So then what I mean, like, what is it? Uh, is it the fact that children are in danger that, that, that puts up the, the red light in the back of your head on on uh, the, the clowns luring yeah, kids into it, the forest? It seems like it seems like if somebody's trying to lure kids, number one, probably are clowns, you pro con, Brian? Make that clear. Uh, well, we weren't. Yeah, uh, I, I it just seems like so. Such the obvious leap that I, I don't think anyone would. It seemed like a giant advertisement to get arrested immediately to take that step of 
doing the almost cartoonish stereotype type of looking like Stephen King's it. Yeah, but okay. you know, we take three things which should be totally fine. Dressing up a clown, fine, weird, but fine. Giving out candy, we're about to do that next month. It's a thing we do. Mm-hmm. Telling people to enjoy nature, the woods, you know, go out, see nature. You put those three things together and now you're a criminal, Brian. <laughs> I mean, specifically, I'm accusing him of being imaginary. But, yeah, I guess uh, that would probably disturb a lot of parents. Yeah. I mean, I guess, like, part of me is I, I'm with you, Brian, in that it, it seems like something that is is conflated, right? Like, on some level, what is being the story that is being said might not be what is actually happening. Right. Even if somebody is trying to lure kids into the woods, right? Right. Because it's not like, sure, stranger danger is something that is probably overweighted in our in our psyche, but it's not like it never has happened in the history of, of civilization, right? All, all I'm going to say is if 16-year-old Andrew was hearing these stories and seeing how freaked out people were by them, 16-year-old Andrew and his friends probably going to the costume shop right now <laughs> to get clown costumes and to end up it, you know, to do like draw, get white balloons and draw like faces with like dead eyes and stuff on them. I mean, that seems like the smarter thing to do because like that, at least no hunter will think it's a good idea to shoot a clown and take it home as a trophy. Whereas like plain dress up <laughs> Maybe as, this one as <laughs> I mean, like that seems like the safer thing thing to to skirt than than dressing up as a yaoi or a sasquatch yeah and i i would be like i would get one of my friends we'd stage him by the side of a road where cars go by and then have them hide and then like five miles down the road have another person dressed exactly the same just walk across the road and just uh you know what i'd love to do is drive just unbelievable i'm sure i talked about this at some point on the show one of the weirdest moments i ever had out on the road was driving across um, uh, eastern Oregon, northern uh, Utah, and you know how, like, like first of all, that landscape looks positively alien out there in the desert, mm. and it must have been, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes since we'd last seen a city, and we drove down the street going the opposite direction was a dude pedaling on a bicycle, and this wasn't like a fancy road bike. This was like just a BMX bike, uh, with what appeared to be kind of a steampunky hippie getup and the biggest uh, S-eating grin I'd ever seen on a person, just just wide-eyed and happy as could be pedaling. And I was like, what was the, what did I say? And it was the remoteness that, that, that made it so curious, which makes me think it might be fun to, <laughs> like, dress as a, as like a, velociraptor or something and uh in an alien costume and just go literally drive an hour out to the middle of nowhere in the middle of the day the heat and just start like mocking out sketching out some kind of fist fight just to see if anybody calls it in or says anything or reports anything or if the guy even stops because how do you describe that you know brian you're onto something there i think one Weird Things needs its own cryptid mascot, like something that actually has is real but is so obscure. Yeah. I think we need to maybe say some, some nominations for what should our cryptid mascot be, and maybe we see if we can find other sightings of that. You know, like how sometimes you've got to increase the available light, like you if you have, let's say, an... Uh, Photoshop, you have a dark image and you add like a layer of like white layer, it actually makes details pop out. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. Sometimes maybe you need a sighting to trigger people to report other sightings so they can contextualize it. So if I'm hearing you correctly, it seems like once we pick a cryptid, everybody should really be on the lookout for that cryptid. And maybe we do some adjustments to make sure that people will know and recognize it. Some enhancements. You want to make sure, like those famous photos of... What's supposed to be, is it? Is it the, uh, uh, what's Nessie supposed to be? What kind of uh, sea monster? Plesiosaur. Yeah, plesiosaur. Like that iconic diamond-shaped fin uh, appears to be just a lighting artifact that was enhanced into existence. Like when you see the original, not so much looking like the, the side of a dinosaur. Yeah, I mean, just maybe if it's spotted. So that's a thought. Oh, but I have another thought right now. You know what time it is. What's the what time? What time is it? Journey quest time. Huzzah. 
Yes. So all uh, right, journey quest. When we when we last left our heroes, uh, uh, Brian was in the basement of an abandoned Dunkin' Donuts. He had been given a uh, a, 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 a offer he couldn't refuse. Uh, either take over a town comprised totally of pregnant women uh, or or die, basically, because the, <laughs> the patriarch of that town wanted to get the hell out of here. Uh, Brian radioed Justin, who... Uh, uh, I, I didn't come there, right? I was just talking no, to him. No, no, yeah. In fact, you were, you were hunkered down. You were bunkered up. And you, you met a guy, a curious character, who... Hung out with you a little bit. Sounded like Brian, but but uh, I'm I'm just gonna guess that guy left. Uh, well, no, I'm I'm still in the 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 battle van uh, with him. Now you you don't know that I was in the middle of abandoning you uh, to uh, to to go uh, onward and westward with my new friend. Uh, but I I am on the I am on the horn with you, and we decide that we are going to stage. A, uh, we're, we're going to stage a daring escape. I'm going to break you out because uh, we've offered the captor the battle van. Uh, but what he doesn't know is we're going to double cross him and 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 get you the hell out of there. Right. So so are we? Uh, has has Justin arrived yet, Andrew? So actually, this is what's happening. Justin's driving. You're asleep next to him. And then you wake up and you're like, dude, I had the weirdest dream in the world. Wait, so the last two episodes were all just a dream? You're like, dude, I had the weirdest dream in the world. I came to this town called Salvation. There was some dude named Steve who said he was part of Diamond Club. And Justin's like, wait, hold up. I see a sign that says, welcome to Salvation 2. Huh. And everything happens exactly like it. Oh, did thank before. goodness! <laughs> so it was it was all preordained. Got it? Okay. Yeah. No. Hey, yeah, Justin. You, just, remember that? Uh, uh, over. Remember that dream that I had that all this oh, was no, going to happen? You're captured. You're in front of Steve now. You just you're like ah, dreams, prophecy. It's not real. Yeah, this is very similar. Feels the same. Blah blah blah. Then I yep. Here I am in the Dunkin' Donuts basement. Right, but 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 uh, but also like the dream, I'm on the radio with Justin again, plotting yep, my you're, escape. Exactly, you're back on the radio, with Justin. Right. Uh. Uh. <laughs> all right, buddy. Listen. Uh. I'm gonna tell Steve. But it's Salvation Two. Salvation Salva Two. Okay. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell it's, Steve. It's Steven. It's at the PH. It's, it's the only two differences. The only two differences. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Steven. It may not have been cheerleaders. It may have been like Dance Squad. It's fine. Could have been Dance Squad. It's fine. Could have uh, been Dance Squad. It uh, may have been like 19 instead of 23 of them. Got it. Justin, yeah, I'm gonna put you on the line with Stephen. Uh, here, Steve, Stephen, talk talk to Justin so you guys could do the handoff because we're definitely gonna give you the battle wagon, buddy. Hey, hey man. Justin, I'm big big fan of Brian, and I'm glad you're able to support him on the show. That's great. Hey, I've heard that things are fantastic with you. I have a, uh, I you got a Dunkin' Donuts there? We we do have a Dunkin' Donuts. We got it working, man. Up and running. Uh I love Dunkin' Donuts. I could eat Dunkin' Donuts and drink Dunkin' Donuts the rest of my life. Uh, uh, Justin, I'm pretty sure. I mean, uh, uh, hey, uh, Andrew, real quick, I look around. Do I actually see any donuts? Are they still making donuts, or are they just? No, like... they're making donuts. Okay, I would okay, okay. Have all right, donuts, all right, Brian. Uh, well, here, how about this? It's not the full menu. It's not the. It's like the airport menu. Okay? <laughs> it's the airport one. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I'm willing to trade you. Cause you got to get the hell out of here, man. Uh, uh, you can take our vehicle. Me and Brian will run that town. Because to be honest with you, listen, we uh, you know we got a. Uh, uh, I mean, we we want to genetically diversify that town, or else everyone's gonna be cross-eyed in five years. That's whoa. That's really a frightening. Reproduction rate. Yeah, I was just thinking. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I butt in. Uh, listen, Justin, I'm sorry, but we're not breeding no five year olds. This here. is where we're nitpicking. <laughs> I mean, okay. Well, also, all right. Sorry. Go, go back, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, listen. Uh, this deal is for Bry only. Uh, Bry, Brian only. Is this Bry? Just, just Bry. I need you to hey, just. Do you up. not want the battle wagon? No, I want the battle wagon. I get the battle wagon, Brian gets the town, and you get lost. Uh, 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 wait, I just got to take a walk? Uh, you can come with me in the battle wagon. So I can come with you? 
You just got to keep your mouth shut. That's all. So, all right. So I'm going to come pick you up in the battle wagon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the deal. Yeah, and bride, bride hey, runs uh, the town. J- just in the meantime, just uh, one, one thing. Can you just loosen up these, these knots? They're super tight. And it's like, I want to start getting my hands on all the, all those girls because they're all, you said they're whoa, all. Whoa, whoa, whoa. These are pregnant mothers, Brian. Yeah, they all need massages too. I mean, it's fine. Let me just, I just, I'm not so much digging the cut off circulation I'm and all that. misogyny here, by the way. It's, uh, what? Mis- mis- You're implying that they want to be touched by you, okay? I mean, first of all, I'm their king. I mean, okay, Whoa, fine, whoa, fine. whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me tell you what. You know, we've had some nice conferences here. We've had some discussions, and I've really rethought the way that I treat women. And there's, they're gonna want, they're gonna want to talk to you. There's gonna be some ground rules laid down. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, I mean, I'm just kind of questioning your your authority here. I mean, I thought, uh, I thought we had a deal. You get the wagon, and I get the town. So <laughs> it's my town. Tell you what. You're, the the wagon's yours. It's already been deeded to you. It's on its way. Justin's delivering. He's going to be a great traveling companion. Uh, snores a bit, but it's fine. Uh, in the meantime, let's say you just uh, untie old Bri Bri. Yeah, once we get the battle wagon. Once we get the battle wagon, we'll do that. Hmm. All right. Now, uh, at this point, I'm, I'm ending my transmission. Yep. Right? I still got my, my strange traveler in the battle wagon with me that I met outside of salvation or do I not? Was that, he, was that he, bu- he ducked out. He took off running. All right. So it's just me. Yeah. Uh, his name was Nick Paulo and he took off running. All right. Uh, well, so I'm trying to figure out how we pull off this here double cross. Cause I was counting on the guy in the back that could maybe just hide in the bathroom and then, you know, of the RV and then. Hey, and this then- is Steven on the radio. Why are you telling me this? I said I ended transmission. I said oh, I ended oh. transmission. <laughs> Sorry. Forgot. Forgot. Uh, uh, man, maybe you could, uh, I mean, regardless, mm. I mean, you could maybe just, it's a tough battle wagon. You could maybe just drive uh, in the, the, the wall Flash forward, you're in the middle of the town. Justin's in the battle wagon. Ro- windows rolled up, ready to go. Steven walks forward. Brian's still in ropes. Uh, is right. is so the I, whole I, town I, out, or is it just the three of us? You see three, but you see people look like snipers on the roof, dressed, oh, dressed in, let's say, you know, fashionable sort of mufti, <laughs> muftai. Low-cut negligees. <laughs> no, no problem. Uh, uh, all right. Well, I say, uh, hey, Steve, man, we're going to get right on the road. But before we get out into this apocalyptic wasteland, can you just let me have one donut and a cup of Dunkin' Donuts coffee? It would just, I mean, who knows the next time we're going to see one of these things, buddy? Absolutely. Why don't you come on out of the van and come into the Dunkin' Donuts and Steve gestures towards you and... Come on out. Come on out. Come on. There's the Dunkin' Donuts right there. You look, you see a bright-faced girl behind the counter there waving at you. Everybody's waving, smiling. I sort of, I sort of just the snipers sort of are waving. Baby hop. I've, I mean, I'm all tied up. I'm just sort of hopping a little bit, just a little bit closer. Not not so big that anyone would notice, but, uh, you know, just a little hop, hop, hop closer to the How wagon. about this? I'm actually going to take care of some stuff here. I'm a real slob, Steve. Like, I, I got to get this battle wagon cleaned up before you come aboard. Uh, Brian knows what I like at Dunkin' Donuts, though. <laughs> can you just untie Brian so Brian can go ahead and, and, and get what I normally get at Dunkin' Donuts? He can run it right to the car. You hop in the, uh, in the wagon, and we're off. I, I, I take three more tiny bunny hops towards the wagon. <laughs> Like ever so, like weeping silently as I'm trying to get farther. Whoa, 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 whoa! That's as far as you go, Bri Bri. Come back over here. Uh, okay, boss. Yeah, want to hop on over this way? Back inside, some Boston cream are just ready. Uh, all right. So, so, well, so then, 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 uh, what, what are we doing, Stephen? How's this gonna go? As soon as your buddy gives me the van, you. You, I untie you. You run the town. Well, I mean, we didn't. Uh, do we? Do we have keys for the van, Justin? Or do we rig up like just a push button start? Or no, there's keys. There's okay. keys in the van, and and I I got my I got my hands on them. Uh, well, I mean, I guess you better give them those. Well, keys. here we go. No, Steve, Brian, Brian's got my Boston cream and my sweet and light Dunkin' Donuts. 
Why don't you all just come on? Brian's got to grab his crap out of the van anyway. Uh, for quite out loud, would you please untie me? I can't even get over there. I can't grab my stuff. No, I know. Yeah, he's gonna. You and Steven are gonna come on the van. He's gonna untie you because he's gonna be in the van. You're gonna grab your crap. You're gonna get the hell out of here. You're gonna be the king of the town. Okay. Uh, or, sorry, so, a, a functioning uh, participant of a multi-gender like, uh, leadership committee. There Steve's you go. like, I can't do that. I really, really can't do that. Uh, this is Brian Wade here. Goes back over to you, offers you a box of donuts. Is like, hey. Try the Boston cream. Winks at you. Hey, listen, I, I, I'm just gonna listen. I, I don't want to come off like a real wiener here, but Brian's stuff stinks, and only he knows where he kept it. So, uh, you need to get Brian over here right now. I'm just getting a little, a little hot. I, I'm really, I'm really psyched to never uh, uh, be around him again. But I need you to get Brian untied and on this battle wagon right now, so I don't gotta sniff whatever the hell he's got hidden back there. Okay, so Steve's like, listen, uh, Brian's really enjoying the Boston cream in the donut shop. You should try the Boston creams, too. All right, at this point, Wink. I'm fed up with this. I say, you guys are both idiots who want each other to fall for your transparently obvious schemes. Uh, wait, please, Justin, just pull out a gun and shoot him. Just somebody I, do something. But Brian, you're in the donut shop, and, and you're yelling through the window. Yeah, yes, that's exactly. That's, yes. I'm, I'm like a frustrated viewer watching the world. I'm, a, I'm some I'm Justin. Listen, your buddy's really, really tense there, but you know, try the Boston cream. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> I start the car. I, start the, I shout. I shout. I don't blame you. Is the last the thing you hear. Not. Uh, I don't eat the donut. No. <laughs> Do you take the donuts with you? No, I, I say, listen, why would I take the donuts from this guy who's holding my friend hostage, who won't even let what I think to be a fairly, I mean, yeah, it's going to be a tense trade off, but, but you know, this is what, this is what, a, a, a before you a, leave, a, I'm like, you really should try the Boston creams. <laughs> They've got good fortune and looking around nervously. All right. I, say, oh, Hey, Hey, Steve, you want to know what? Why don't you eat a Boston cream? How about we have a Boston cream together where you eat five times faster than I do? I'm like, uh, uh, sure. I, I like to. All right. I uh, hop over to the jelly box. Donut here. I like to split it apart first, but maybe inside my van when nobody's watching and then lick the, the jelly out. Uh, oh, 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 wait a minute. All right. Hey, Steve. Why don't you hand me one of them there Boston creams? I'm glad you asked. Here's oh, a Boston cream. I love Boston creams. I I like it best when you eat it slowly and savor it by opening up the Boston cream. It's I open up the Boston cream. What do I see in the middle of it? A little note. What does the note say? Oh, you go back inside your van and you read it. Yeah. Help. I'm a hostage here, too. <laughs> You're going to kill me. Unless I get you out of the van. <laughs> uh, okay. So. Um, and then I may have a plan. I'll have to put in another donut. Maybe you come up with something better first. All right. My question, how many how many notes have I swallowed by this point? A lot, I've right. just been, Yeah, because I've just been, I've been hoping that, the, that they're drugged, and I'm just wolfing them down. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, oh man, that Boston cream was the best. I want another donut, uh, from you, Steve, man. What is, what is, give me another one. Just lay it on me, my man. Sure. And Steve hands you another donut and then you open it up and it says, here's my plan. I'm going to go back into the Dunkin' Donuts, crash into the front of it and let us into the van and let's all get out of here. All right. Uh, I spit the donut out into Steve's face and I say, this tastes like garbage. You've defied our trust and our bond. Like I'm, 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 that's it. I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting the hell out of here. You and Brian can have each other. You get back in that Dunkin' Donuts and you learn how to make a donut. At this you point, suck, Steve. I've started doing the inchworm. Like I'm no longer trying to bunny hop. I'm just, I'm scrunching up and then lengthening the body, scrunching up, lengthening the body, <laughs> dragging my face. My face is bleeding a trail as I'm just trying to get down the the gravel road 
to the so battle wagon. I, I make a big show like, you need to think twice about that. Steve looks nervously around at the snipers. You're going to come to your senses, won't you see? And I look down and see Brian, for God's sake, man, pick him up and drag him back into the Dunkin' Donuts. Right, as he's dragging me back, I'm just, I'm blubbering, saying, like, just put me on the bike. You don't even have to untie the ropes. And I whisper, don't worry, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's, it's going to be fine. It's not ever going to be fine. All right, so I take, uh, start up the van, and I uh, say, screw you, Steve, while I shoot double birds out the window. You understand, uh, downtown looks exactly like the downtown old city in Universal Studios, like Hill Valley and all that. Gotcha. So I do, uh, I, I start to turn, I, I make the one right around town square, and then I make the other right around town square, <laughs> and instead of making the left to go out of town, I start to accelerate, I make another right, and I start barreling toward the Dunkin' Donuts, and I slam into the Dunkin' Donuts. And next and time on Journey Quest, we'll find out what happens next. I would like to think that you blasted uh, Dixie on the horn when you did. Uh, no, as I, as I went into the window, I, I, I continued to put my middle fingers out the, uh, the window, and I said, screw you, weird matriarchy. <laughs> So, uh, gentlemen, do you have any picks? Uh, yeah, I got a quick and easy one. Uh, one of my favorite moments was getting invited during Dragon Con to participate in the live recording of Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. And it occurs to me that, um, uh, you know, as often happens when you get a new device, you uh, forget to uh, copy over all your podcasts. And so I'm going back and getting started on those again. They do a lot of real good work, those skeptics. They do a guide to the universe. You want, like, real skepticism and stuff. Yeah, no, no, no. Smart people. Smart, smart people. Yeah, not they, guys they would talking never, about a they would never, donut shop. Yeah, they would never announce that the Higgs boson discovery was a lie. <laughs> uh, I am going to pick a movie that I saw on the plane on the way back, and I'd seen it before, but I forgot how much I really liked it. Uh, Ant-Man. He's a man, but he's also an ant. Uh, so I, I, I mean, obviously that was a movie that had a lot of, uh, a very troubled development period and it, uh, you know, lost its director and had to change, you know, creative courses fairly late in the process was probably about as, uh, as turbulent as a Marvel movie could get leading up to it. But man, is that a fun movie? It's just so fun and, and it's really well made and, uh, for 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 what it is, it it just has this like, even even that film that obviously you know went through so much, has this like confidence about it. Like just visually, it just feels uh you know b between the the interconnectivity of the other stories, uh just the little visual things that I noticed having seen it again this time, like uh the lingering shots of establishing uh, uh Hank Pym's keychain that mm -hmm. uh, has the little mini uh, tank, tank on it. Like there's, there's just uh, so much fun stuff in there. And I, I, I really, really liked it. And, and it really made me excited to see, you know, Ant-Man and Wasp, uh, which uh, I guess is in, in development now with uh, Evangeline Lilly and uh, homeboy as, uh, as, as Ant-Man. So I don't know. I really dug it. Ant-Man, go see it. I wonder I, if I'll enjoy it a lot more when it's in a lower stakes environment. There are certain movies that, you know, you, you get the whole you get the whole family together, you buy the tickets, you build it up in your mind, you're like, oh, it was all right. But then you catch it again just on a whim and you're like, man, that was so much fun. I'll bet I'll, I'll bet that's how it is for me on that one. I, I just watched Civil War, uh Captain America Civil War, and and it was such a great to have like the our follow up with Ant Man in there. Yeah. You know, great, great Ant Man scenes in that and just a great follow up in that universe and I'm nervous about Doctor Strange. For the Can I, well, let me say something about Doctor Strange. Because I realized something rewatching Ant-Man. That, man, Marvel movies love the hero throwing themselves into a portal selflessly that they wind up falling back out of miraculously. And I was like, oh, well, this is how they... Spoilers. This is a part of the ending of The Avengers. This is a part of the ending of Doctor Strange. Or sorry, about, about Ant-Man. I'm like, I wonder if they'll ever do it again. And then I remembered 
that the next Marvel movie we're going to see is about somebody who opens portals and has to learn a lesson about selflessness. <laughs> so now I'm just curious to see whether or not Doctor Strange at some level, at some point in the final 10 minutes, throws himself into a portal that he's not supposed to so he can selflessly prove his worth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will say this. Uh, uh, my, my, my opinion on Doctor Strange completely changed seeing the 3D trailer. The, 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 the 3D IMAX trailer, and I am not a 3D guy. I hate 3D. I only went to go see a 3D movie because it was the only option to see the movie in a very short time frame. But I was blown away by how good Doctor Strange looked in, in, in 3D. It made me uh, excited to see it for the, for, for the first time. Nice. Right. You got a pick? Yes, it's the Skeptics Guide yeah. to the Universe yeah. podcast. Yeah. I was just sort of sharing an anecdote. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Bosa. <laughs> it's still Shut around. Up, <laughs> Leave me alone. Um, my <laughs> pick is uh, Turn, the AMC show about the Washington, George Washington spy. Oh, yeah. Stars, uh, was it uh, Jamie Bell? Uh, really, really good. Very enjoyed it. The first two seasons are up on Netflix and thought it was a, a neat approach towards that part of the story of the American Revolution. And uh, again, enjoyed it very much. One of these things where I think they do a good job of showing good and bad characters on both sides of the issue. And, and so that it's not just a, you know, oh, those rotten British, you know. So I enjoyed that very much. Thought it was very well done. And obviously they take a tremendous amount of license there. So. So there this is uh, about the, 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 the George Washington spy ring? Yeah. Nice. That's the premise of it. Uh, Justin, do you have a pick? <laughs> All right. It's been weird. I'm calling it. It's been weird. <laughs> there we go. Let me save as. Literally. Oh, I have a late last minute plug. Oh, can we add this on? Uh, sure. Let me, let me see if I can zoom in enough that I could just add this right at the end. Uh, okay. Ready? And three, two, one. One more thing, folks. I've been conducting an experiment I'm gathering people from time to time, virtually, and uh, so far, I've had Justin, I've had Brett Runzeville, I've had Bryce, I've had a friend of mine, Jordan Gould. At some point, I hope I can get Brian on board. And that is for the experiment called The Darker Path. And The Darker Path is you take what we do with, let's say, the, the scenario here, and a little more structure and spun out to about an hour, hour, 10 minutes in length. And... Each episode is its own standalone. We've done one. We've actually recorded two so far. The first one is up. And if you go to soundcloud.com slash Andrew Main, you can listen to that episode. I brought in a fantastic audio engineer, uh, Ernie Hurtado, who has done an amazing job of adding sound effects and stuff to like give it dimension, et cetera. So please check it out. Please let me know what you think. Constructive criticism is helpful. We're trying to figure out the format and how this thing should work and how to structure this. So I want to keep doing these and making more of them happen. But so far, the response has been great and very, very helpful. So, Yeah, I really enjoyed doing it, and I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. But I, I, I'm, I'm pumped to, to have everybody listen to it and give it a shot. Andrew, you have a, 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 an email list sign up for it, right? Is there, is there a place do. you can get Go to that? darkerpath.com, sign up for the email list on that. I, I'm going to do the first few out of pocket, but eventually to keep bringing in the services of great audio engineering, I'll need to do like some sort of Patreon or something like that to support it. But uh, if you give a listen to it, I think you'll really dig it if you're into that kind of thing. It, either I've had the response has been like 90%, oh my God, I love it. And then like 10%, like one person's like, this is really jarring. And I'm like, well, maybe that won't be for you. And that's fine. It's, it's okay. Right on. It's been weird. There you go. Got your ass. Thank you. Hey. So, yeah. Speaking of criticism, did you see the Kevin Smith reading the uh, yoga hoser I, stuff? I couldn't watch the whole thing. I mean, I've, I've, I've heard him be very defensive about uh, his movies enough before that I didn't necessarily need a, 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 a refresher oh, on no. it. Oh, well, no. Uh, well, especially, you know, this is the one that's got his daughter in there, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it, it's that weird 
space where in one level we want to be immune, you know, we don't want critics to be the ones to sort of take apart what we do. But on the other level, I go like, yeah, but how do you know you're growing as an artist? And that was sort of as a guy who loves his podcast, loves his life, should listen to him talk live. It's been fantastic to see that as a guy that used to really love his movies, you know, I feel like when he's like, well, it's not, I'm like, why are you alienating me? I was a fan, you know, now if I don't like this thing, you know, because it's just for you, I don't know. Well, I, listen, I think that, that obviously the larger that criticism gets, the, the more it can be viewed a little differently. I, I, I think that this was a, a yoga hosers was a film that a lot of the critics that, I tend to agree with, uh, you know, did not find it to be his best work. Uh, I think that there's also a little bit of a, uh, a, 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 he's in a weird place as a filmmaker because number one, he's making a lot of these films that are, are almost explicitly in jokes to the podcast, you know, to, to the, uh, the, the, the Smodcast podcast. So, there's one thing where it's like, okay, well, maybe this, I mean, this is like for the fans, you know, like maybe, but at the same time, it's like, well, where, where was your promise as a filmmaker? And there's also kind of the double criticism of the fact that he seemed to show some, uh, some evolution. The first that he had shown in a very long while with, with Red, Red State, State Red yeah. State was a different kind of movie for him. Uh, so, you know, I, 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 I think as soon as he said he was making a movie with, uh, with, with his daughter, there are, are more critically lauded filmmakers that have decided to make movies with their kids that have f shared the similar fate of, uh, of, of, you know, of being tossed around critically. So it's like that, that seems to me to be the rule and not the exception that, this is a passion project thing. Although it does remind me, uh, I was listening to an interview with 50 Cent of all people. And 50 Cent was talking about uh, making albums and that when an album flops, an artist very often says, well, you know, I didn't expect that one to be successful because that one was just for me. And 50 Cent's reaction was, well, then that shit just should have stayed in your house. <laughs> why, <laughs> why did you... Why did you ask us to buy it if it was just for you? If you were really happy with it, then you can just keep it in your house and it can exist there and you can be really happy with it forever. Uh, and, and, and that's one of those things where it's like, well, yeah, you know, I mean, ultimately, as much as we want to say that art is, is this pure artifice and we are, 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 we are just doing this because this muse in our soul is singing to us. If you're selling art, you are are a commercial artist, right? Like that's so. That's do just... we do this for after things? I realize it. Or uh, yeah, I mean, uh, actually, I I'm kind of out of time. Uh, All right. uh, do do you guys want to do? I don't know what the best way to record it would be. Um, hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Uh. Do you want to, uh, Justin? Do you want to try switching on after things? Uh, yeah, I could. I don't know if I have the weird things. You're gonna need to send me the weird things, uh, or someone will need to send me the weird things uh, codec stuff, so I can uh, I can put all this together. Um, uh, I guess the other alternative. Uh, well, here. Uh, let me, let me go ahead and set it up. I'll start it. Let me let me find out what my obligations are with the the family downstairs, and maybe maybe I can yeah. join you guys. I mean, if we could keep it tight, I think you know, we'll see see what you have to do. But uh, okay, well here, uh, do you want me to start recording or or check and come back? Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, what do we have? Uh, I mean, like what, what 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 would I mean? I guess let's just let's just start going. All right, and, we'll start we'll, going. All right, ready? Three, two, one, and go. Wait, Welcome wait, to the After wait, Things I Podcast. Up. I screwed up. What? Ready? Three, two, one, and go. Welcome to the After Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young and Brian Brushwood, who's going to go check on something, but he's here right now. Say hello, Brian. Hi, hi. I'll be right back. And that's Brian Brushwood, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much.
So, Justin. Yeah. How you doing? Good, man. How are you? Good, good. So I uh, I did a little tease at the end of Weird Things for the Darker Path Project, which you've been helping me out with. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know, it's a longer form taking a scenario and stretching it out to an hour with a little more details and stuff. And then the for the final product, bringing in an audio engineer to go in and add in layers and stuff. And it is a very, very different. It's one thing to say, hey, let's have a scenario on weird things and goof off for about 10 or 15 minutes and see where it goes. It's another thing to try to map out an hour of something. Yeah, no, it, it's a big storytelling challenge for you, and and really, it's not even like a, there's there's a whole lot of previous kind of material to go on or to model it after. I mean, the biggest thing that I would say would be like, choose your own adventure slash D and D campaign. But uh, but but uh, you know, there there's a lot of really interesting creative decisions that I know you have to make in terms of of how on rails the world is how much it, it, it's going to be free-flowing how much you're improving. like there's there, there's a lot of, of of decisions both long-term and short-term that you gotta that you gotta settle on yeah and there's and for those of you want to check it out go to soundcloud.com slash andrew main and you'll see it it's a darker path beta and the rpg thing's been brought up a few times and, and one of my things i've commented on that like yeah those some of those different rpg stuff and diceless rpg stuff are really fun if you're playing if you're watching it it's boring as and i've had to be like oh it's like this it's like if you ever try to watch one of those campaigns listen it's not i i, I don't want it to be like that because that's it's tedious there is some stuff online like dan Harmon and stuff has done some cool D D stuff where it's not about the game it's about everybody riffing on everything sort of going around the sort yeah. of thing and where we're trying to figure out is like, not to say, oh, this is original. We're saying it's like, it's, it's a different thing. And, and I found in the two that we've done so far, at they have both ran about hour 10, hour 15 minutes. I wanted to keep it under an hour. But at like the 40-minute mark, things really get going. And that's yeah. one, it becomes very entertaining. But that's not to say the first 40 minutes is entertaining. I people, a, lot of, a lot of people like it. But I want to compress that. I want to make that get that thing going faster. And that's well, and 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 part of that is figuring out, you know, what is, what is the line between tedium and suspense, mm -hmm. right? Which which is very much a storytelling question, uh, where I think if you're going to draw the line between what you're doing and a D and D or a Pathfinder, and, and listen, there are. There are plenty, you know, there are Twitch channels that are dedicated just to that, right? And, and, and there are some people that, that really, really like to get lost in watching people go through those universes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, in, in my sense, from the two times that you've done it with me, more like a evolved role-playing version of, of, a, of a, a... I mean, I want to say choose your own adventure only because that's literary, but mm -hmm. but you know some kind of interactive literary sort of story and what you've done with the audio production is to kind of make it far more like something like Radio Lab uh, than than anything that has really kind of come out of our little coven of audio creators which uh, you know have, have, have by and large really done more kind of radio panel present style uh, you know unedited stuff. Which is, uh, you know, I think is is great. It's it's great to have that diversity on the on in our in our family. Well, that's thanks by and large to uh, Ernie Hurtado, who's the guy who's doing the sound engineering on it. He's, does an amazing job on it. And so, for the answer to the question we had just in the chat room is is each is to cont continuous like no each episode standalone, standalone because I want to be able to bring in different people and have them participate and. Right now, I've been calling them beta episodes because I'm trying to figure out this format. It's like part of it I like, but part of it I go, man, this, this drags. How do I get from there to here? And and part of that's me becoming a better storyteller and choosing things better. But it evolves. Well, let me ask you about that then because this is something that along with all that sweet audio editing and all that production value does come cost. It does come you know, involving other collaborators. Uh, how do you plan to pay for all that, Andrew Maine? Well, the plan is I gonna keep doing the first few out of pocket, and then at some point, if there's traction, if I think I've got the format, continue on and do a Patreon. That's gonna be the goal to do it, and and not like a high volume, like oh, I need a thousand per episode. Like I'll just figure out what the costs are to 
keep having an audio engineer do that and keep it going and, and just started it there just so it's not a thing that I do when I feel like oh, I want to spend a couple hundred bucks on this episode. So that's my plan. What's your guys' advice on as far as launching Patreons? Uh, build value first. Uh, it, um, the best metaphor I've heard is that your value with your audience is, uh, think of it in terms of a bank vault. When you give content to them, you, when you build your brand, that is filling the bank vault up. And when you make a sale or get people to subscribe to a Patreon, you are taking a withdrawal out. And it's perfectly fine mm -hmm. to withdraw money from the bank when there's money in the bank. Uh, but uh, the mistake people make is they're all like, well, I need to start a business. So let me start by getting you know $10,000 out of this bank vault that doesn't have anything in it right now. So I, I would probably recommend uh, uh well i don't know you i mean you have a considerable amount of brand value from your other stuff as well but i'm a bigger fan of uh you know like like the modern rogue uh we've toyed with the idea of doing a, a patron model on that but i feel like w we're not even a year old and i feel like we haven't provided enough value to start asking for anything yet yeah but that's also a thing that exists in a venue where it's ad supported so there's there's a it, there's income going into it you know already though and so i say that that's a and to, and to step it up with a patreon obviously could be a thing to do but you're it's not like every episode is just costing you fully out of pocket it was initially you know but it's, sure but my, my point but, is people have to know what they're buying and oh, I, agree, even, I agree and that's even that's at nearly a year is, is, i don't feel like we we've, we've quite figured out what oh, that no, show well, is the plan is i'm not going to do a patreon and say it's going to happen after that the plan is 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 keep putting out episodes and then say here's a patreon after a certain point if we want to keep it going is i don't expect anybody to just like oh yeah i'll give you my money for something i never heard that'd be stupid um the point is is just saying how do you build up to that how kind of runway do you do and you know and and you know, the goal is also is to set a very low, like, this is what it needs to do. This is not like, hey, I'm going to set base this number on how to pay my mortgage. You know, I'm going to be like, no, this is a real, this is what it costs per episode to do this, not including some talent fee for me or anything like that. It's like, literally, this is what's coming out of my PayPal account to make this thing happen. Yeah, I mean, but but to to what you were saying, Brian, I know that we've we've definitely given advice in the past about, like, you know, uh, for, for, for Patreon, sometimes it doesn't hurt. I mean, I think it really... Whether or not you want to set up a Patreon really depends on how much you your relationship with the Patreon is going to be, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're going to lean heavily on it, then, yeah, you should have, like, if you're asking, hey, this is an important thing for me, please consider donating to it, uh, and you're going to do that kind of plea up front or in the middle of the show or where it's, like, big and in front of people, then then that's one thing. But if if... You know, I've I've always kind of uh, been along the lines of like, you know, I was late to Patreon. Brian tried to sell me on Patreon a year before we wound up doing one for Night Attack, and and I thought that it was going to screw with the audience, and I was not for it. Uh, I was wrong. I was loud wrong. Patreon as a platform has changed my life. Now, what have I learned from that? Part of it is that don't feel ashamed about setting up a little net. Right. If Patreon is just a net where people who are your mega fans who without you prodding them just want to throw a few, uh, 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 you know, a little support your way, then then I, I don't think it's bad to have it. But I do think that from what to Brian's point, if uh, if, if you're going to lean heavily on it, then uh, then, you know, you, you should not do it hoping that fans appear. You should do it knowing that there will be a crowd that is going to look at that as a rallying cry and say like, yeah, awesome. Like we get to support this person that I care about in need. What I think is interesting about your situation is that it's almost in this second level of Patreon, right? Because Patreon comes out and now all of a sudden there's a lot of either established or semi-established uh, properties that had not been monetized in that way that now all of a sudden have a place where they can go and it's got brand value and no one's afraid that it's going to go to wait, go away tomorrow and creators aren't worried that the that the checks aren't going to come now it's this institution right but in the same way that kickstarter started as kind of one thing and then by way of it being used in the process sort of uh, you found different permutations of how to run them and what they what were best what i think is interesting about this project for you andrew is it's 
almost it can almost be more like a Kickstarter. Like you could just say, hey, I've I've taken out X amount of money and that's going to go toward I've talked to my audio engineer. We're going to do X amount of episodes. Here's what it costs for an episode to do to, to, to have go forward. Right now, we are at episode six of eight of of our limited run series. If we get to this number, then they'll keep going. If they if it, if it if it if it drops below that number, then we'll stop. And either it's a limited run and everything's free, or people dig it to the point where it's a a regular thing. And now all of a sudden, people made their new favorite podcast happen because they turned a limited series into a a regular thing. They turned their the, the, a backdoor pilot into a series. They turned their favorite movie into a sequel and a franchise. You know. Um, I, I think like that to me is, is the most interesting way to look at launching something on, on Patreon because you're at, at no point is it ever really like a, a sad thing either, you know, either it's going to be a limited series and you declare victory and go home or it's a show and the amazing people that, that sprung up around it made it happen. Yeah, I almost wonder if it wouldn't be worth it to split it into kind of two campaigns where uh, launch it, you know, do a Kickstarter type thing is like, look, if we can get two thousand dollars. I could pay this audio engineer to do 10 episodes of this thing. And, you know, uh, if you here's what the betas sound like. Uh, season one will be 10 episodes long. Hope we make it. And then you make it or, or you don't. And uh, my guess is you'll blow past whatever that number is. Then you do it. And then now everybody gets it and loves it. And then, uh, and then the story becomes, uh, and guess what? We can have it forever if you like it now. You know, just just throw something on the Patreon. Yeah, it's an interesting approach. You know, I I'm still trying to figure this thing out and figure it through because, like, I look at it where if I cover the cost of the episode of just that part, I'm happy because for me, part of the reason why I got excited about Darker Path is I'm trying to do things that are very much on brand for Andrew Maine as a writer. You know, Andrew Maine and writer, and I have a lot of ideas or a lot of great ideas, you know, podcasts and stuff, but. I want to do something that's going to be, hey, I like the way this guy tells story. I like this way that he does this. I want to check out his books. You know, and that's kind of the goal is like, let me create a podcast that does that. They can have fun content every week. And that was sort of that's where this came from was how to do that. And so, you know, I'm, for me, so it's like, yeah, if I can figure out a way to just cover that, that real cost, I'm happy, you know. So. Yeah. Meanwhile, I will do one more plug here, if I may. Uh, authorpage.com, we're getting ready to bring in our first big wave of beta users. We've had some people on the site testing it out. If you go to authorpage.com, you can see what I've been working on. This is a free author website for authors. We allow you to list your books, post short stories, blog, do a lot of other cool stuff, and some other features to be announced. And uh, so far, the reception has been fantastic. If you click on, uh, if you scroll down there, you'll see like an example of my page. You can also, we have, if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see an example of just, um, we've just started listing authors. And I think we've only have like myself, Peter, and somebody else has done that. But if you go to authorpage.com, you can see the 11 things that it does for you. There's my page and Peter's page there. There's a video. And um, just, you know, it's, we're trying to make it very easy. If you have a book, or even if you don't have a book, let's say you just want to start by writing short stories. Author page is a great way to do that. You can post your short stories there, send out links that provide people with this really easy to read format that looks like book print. I'm actually working on a new version of that that's going to have pagination for longer stories. And it simplifies it to change things and do updates. It's so quick. I've got a stats panel in there. So when you log in with your account and you want to see how many people visited your site in the last hour, it'll tell you how many people looked at a book. It will tell you how many people read your stories. It will tell you there's nothing better than doing a social media campaign and actually knowing if people went in there and looked at what you had to say. So right now, Brian is clicking through on the site. And if I click on stats, I can see right now in real time that he just clicked on, uh, I think a uh, secret identity. So that's one of the things we also allow you to plug in for more techie stuff. If you want to do Google analytics and to see how long time, how much time people spend reading something. I found that promoting your stuff is a pain, promoting your stuff is a pain in the ass. This makes it very, very easy to do this because what happens with this is that 
when you put something out there, hey, everybody, I've got a short story, and you go look and you see people click on it, it's encouraging. You want to do it again. You want to send out another post the next day. You want to put more stuff up there, and you want to share the stuff. So that is authorpage.com. It's a project I've been working on with Peter J. Wax, and you can check that out. We're going to try to do, I think, on Saturday a live stream where we're going to give out the beta invite codes to everybody who has been uh, so far – you know, signed up for that, and we're going to allow them to go do that. And so this is a fun project. Again, no immediate path to monetization on this one other than we get the affiliate link codes, but it's just been like, man, this would be a really cool thing. I can make this so other people can use it, and it's free. It's going to be free. All the features I'm saying, like if you're beta, you get in there, it's free. I have no plan to flip this into now you got to pay per month. Our goal is to always figure out how to help you move books and sell books and then make money that way. Uh, what's been the biggest feedback you've gotten? Biggest feedback, I mean, other than, you know, the the – profligate number of little glitches and stuff like that that i have there has been the, the short stories been, people, uh, fix this <laughs> yeah and, and it's good though because you need people using it because there are thousands of lines of code here and and, and sometimes people are like oh well the css things there isn't working like that yeah, needs to be fixed but like trust me that's that's a minor thing compared to what i'm dealing with on the back end but it's been super helpful so the feedback has been very, very helpful. People love the short story function, and that's been a great way to drive people to a site. It's a great way to say, hey, come check out my reading or check out what I have written. And then I need to – we're going to do a lot of work in increasing the you know, the, uh, the turnover from people going from to your page and then clicking on to, to follow you on email and do this other stuff. There's a lot of work that's going to be doing and trying to engineer do that. But the way it works is when we figure out, hey, this is the best call to action to get people to sign up for your email, everybody will have access to it. Hey, this is the best way to create a call to action at the end of a story to get people to click through to look at your books. And right now I'm designing a thing to insert into your Kindle books. If you write books and put them on Kindle and other ebook platforms, what's the best call to action to get people to go to your homepage? And so we're doing that. Actually, our friend Paul, Dr. Paul Zach, we, you know, we've been talking to him a little bit about how do we encourage this sort of things. We're putting some deep science into this stuff. So that's Damn. the author page project. Uh, if people want to get involved, are, are you still accepting uh, beta people? Go to authorpage.com and sign up right there. That's the way to get on board or beta. So, And I thought, so, and you put up a few short stories over the last few days, right? Yeah, I've been posting short stories, and uh, the response has been, you know, fantastic as far as the number of views on those things. It's it's absolutely, uh, you know, exciting to see that because then you see people go through the short story, then they click over to look at your other books, and the next thing you know is you're building up your fan base. So that's been really cool, and it continues to evolve. Right on, awesome. man. Authorpage.com. Mm -hmm. So where it's at. Anybody have any picks? Any picks? Man, I'll tell you what. It's always nutty. Normally, normally I'm pretty good on the picks thing because I'm always, you know, trying to work out and read more stuff. Uh, but this time, uh, boy, going out and doing Dragon Con sure does sure does throw your schedule for a loop. <laughs> Turns out, Dragon Con's my pick. It's the Con of Dragons. Uh, we should, man. It was, it was. It is was that on Netflix? Uh, <laughs> oh, you know what is on Netflix is uh, Narcos season two just dropped. And it looks good. I watched. Uh, I started watching it last night, and then I fell asleep. But uh, it's it's pretty red. <laughs> Brian, it's actually the again. I said that's a dad review. That's a dad review. That's, that's fine. That's <laughs> oh, good, no, no, no. That's I mean, good. it's it's based entirely on my deep, deep affection for season one. I thought the first season was tremendous, and the second season, it's just a direct continuation of the story. Uh, and uh, it's it appears to have had no missteps from what I've seen so far. Nice. Uh, my pick is uh, uh, Brian Brushwood for uh, letting me go on stage uh, as his unannounced intermission uh, during Dragon Con to uh, do what I thought was going to be a uh, very boring and frustrating uh, three minutes for the audience where I would jackknife all of the well-earned uh, energy that Brian had created in the room and uh, uh, turned out uh, far better than 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 I uh, uh, expected. Well, and, and this is a good thing to talk about on After Things because there's a lot of times where you know you're goofing around with a friend and you may have an idea to do a thing. You're like, oh, you know, it'd be hilarious is blank. I'd say for every 99 to 999 times those things get said, the there's maybe one time that they actually get done, and this was definitely one of those times. We had made a joke about. Uh, an all setups magician, no payoffs, no actual magic effect, nothing but the process of magic over and over and over ad again done with 
over enthusiasm, uh, over enthusiasm and energy. And um, uh, man, I'm so glad, so glad that not only that you did it, Justin, but that we thought through the right way to prime the audience to such yeah. a ridiculous notion. We, it was, uh, it was, it was, you know, uh, again, it's, it's so, uh, it's one of those things where, like, if somebody were to mention doing that, like, uh, on after things, we'd probably tell them, no, don't, for the <laughs> following 90 reasons. Like, the idea isn't as funny as you think it is, and, you know, they're there for you and everything. They're there for Brian, like, uh, so you don't want to do anything that's, you know, in any way makes them feel like they are getting cheated, you know, so you can screw off. Yeah, I guess that's on paper. You're right. Uh, on paper, the idea of going on with an untested, unproven idea that actively subverts the stated reason why they're there. They're there to see a magic show. So to yeah. put on a guy, they're there to see Kurt Anderson and Brian Brush would get on stage and do magic. And so to throw someone who is neither of those and also not doing magic and also doing something that has never even been attempted before, just farting off. Uh, that that's some high high stakes poker. <laughs> Uh, but it wound up working out, and it was uh, it was funny because, unbeknownst to me, uh, our uh, friend Andrew, uh, uh, Carl, uh, old, old Carl Coppertop, Carl, Carl Hine, Carl Hine, was uh, in the audience. I didn't know he was even at Dragon Con, but him and uh, I believe John Armstrong were in the audience, and. Uh, uh, I, I he had some very very I ran into him on the Marriott floor on Saturday night. He was dressed as uh, the Green Arrow, and uh, uh, he uh, he had some very very nice things to say. And and he was very pleased with it because he's like, well, like I was dying because I thought like that would kill at a magic convention because magicians, like there was a lot of very like in magic sort of in jokes of like the. Uh, the 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 overuse of like applause lines like hey give this person a round of applause like when they right. when everybody stands up or stands down the like you know uh, well do you want do you want do you want change or do you want to is it is it good or is it is it fair or do you want change is it fair or do you want change like just like a lot of that magic stuff that, that magicians were into but he's like yeah I was blown away that layman like would find that level of like nonsense uh, uh, funny so. That was that was very very cool. It was it was it was cool to to see it happen, and it was it was uh, refreshing to take a risk like that and have it not just be a total failure. Well, we well, also, I mean, I you know, I think we I think we built up a framework where if if you smell disaster, you could have pulled the ripcord at any moment and gotten out of it. <laughs> Justin just runs off the stage crying. <laughs> But but that was that was part of the trick was like well how do we set it up and so uh, we set it up as me saying that um, you know oh my you know how many of you guys know I have a comedy podcast with Justin Robert Young well Justin says he saw this magician and he was hilarious I've never seen him but let's give him a try please welcome some name suspiciously close to Justin Robert Young <laughs> and then uh, and the idea was the moment he felt like he was losing the audience he could pull the plug and we could go back to to my show but uh, but but instead man. It was electricity. I'm sure you've been in the room at stuff like that, where it's just like everybody could kind of feel something happening. Uh, it was great. Uh, so, I mean, at least I know that I could always uh, be the the world's worst magician. So, I where, where would we see this? That's on. It's on YouTube. It's on. I'm sure somebody in the in in, in the chat room can throw us the uh, cool. Throw us the YouTube link. But uh, yeah, it was uh, super fun. Uh, and uh, I, I thank Brian for uh, for for uh, co-conceiving and giving me the the spot to do it. Yeah, thanks for that, Brian. Yeah, <laughs> look what you've done. <laughs> you can't take that back. Great. <laughs> there we go. Knotts has it in the chat room. There, awesome. gentlemen. Yeah. We all good. Mm -hmm. Anybody need to pick? Anybody could pick? We could pick? I, think we've all picked. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think we have all got picks. My pick is the skeptic's guide to the universe. <laughs> Fantastic. It's been after. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. After things. Do, 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 do. Hey, you know what's going to be rad? What? Tomorrow. Rogue One. Tomorrow, when 
when I get air conditioning. I was confused. Like one of the things that was happening is, is I was like, something's wrong with the computer. It's like the fans are running in overdrive. And I just realized it's 30 degrees hotter in this room than it usually Ugh. is. So the fans are, are are having to work extra hard to get everything. Um, so at least it should cool down a little bit because you guys, you guys are a little bit in, in, in the in the hill country where at least like at night it cools down a little bit, right? Uh, yeah, uh, by the time, like right now, I think it's 87, 88 degrees upstairs. Uh, it's hotter in here. It's probably 95, um, yeah, 92. Sorry, but I had to go turn on my air conditioner. By the time, by the time we wake up in the morning, it will have cooled to about 83. But tomorrow should be good. Wow. We just hear a tornado in, in Andrew's room. That is a loud air conditioning. That is no protection. I don't think Andrew can hear us. I don't think he's able to hear us. We're, we're being ducked out, I believe. Andrew, can you hear any of this? Talk. We might be able to. Andrew, talk. I can't hear you guys. Keep talking. Okay, keep, yeah, talking no, keep talking. Keep yeah, talking. Oh, the air conditioner cut it out. Yeah, or? dude, we've heard nothing but a tornado. <laughs> Fantastic. That's amazing. I said I had to turn on my air conditioner. <laughs> no, I think now it's it's normalized a little bit. Sorry. Yeah, I just uh, from your end, I was getting get, rip, 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 what rip. right because because Skype thought you uh, thought yeah, <laughs> and so it was, it was like apparently uh, uh, Andrew's uh, playing techno music and we need to drown everyone out. Well, I turned my air conditioning off because of the bot broadcast. I don't know if you know how hard it is to focus when it's really hot. You mother, father, sister, brother. What are you oh, doing? Geez. You're killing me. Oh, jeez. Uh, all right, guys. Well, hey, uh, I'm, I'm proud of us for making up uh, the episode and uh, look forward to getting back with you guys on Sunday. Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to uh, air conditioning. <laughs> Awesome. All right, gentlemen. Well, I will catch you guys. Look at this. Hold on. I bet I could even play a little bit of music. Hold on. I should just click literally anything. Here. Well, let's play that. <laughs> bye. Bye, guys. I've been looking at the Apple stuff. Oh, man. The after-afters thing.